let's think about why you might want to use multimedia when you teach. To begin with, let's think about teachers who simply give oral lectures and keep talking on and on without using visual aids. I've seen many teachers like this in history class and literature class in the past, and I'm sure you've seen many teachers like that too. So is there a problem here? To think about that further, let's shift our focus from teacher to learner. Think you are a student. So what happens in learner's head, I mean in your head, when you listen to an oral lecture by your teacher with no visual aid? You visualize. At least you try to visualize what your teacher is trying to illustrate. You might say you are not a visual learner and that you don't or don't need to think visually. Is that right? Hell no! We always visualize. It may not be a vivid photographic image, but we always create mental representations that represent visual features, sound, special relationships, temporal relationships, and letters and words in text. So you visualize or create mental representations while you attend to your teachers explaining things. When you fail to do so, that's when you have trouble understanding what your teacher is talking about. So let's shift our focus from student back to teacher. And let me ask you again why you might want to use multimedia for your teaching. Why do you want to do that? It's because if you just talk about it, your students may not necessarily be able to visualize what you're talking about. Some students will have no problem visualizing, but some students will. So what might be the reasons why some students may have a hard time creating mental representations while they listen to what you're talking about? I can give you three major reasons why people fail to visualize things. New concepts, no prior knowledge. When your students don't have enough background knowledge or experience related to what you're talking about, they will have a hard time visualizing what you're talking about. For example, let me give you an example. I'll be just talking about what is called chomage. So try to picture what it is without me giving you visual aid. Better yet, take out a pencil and paper and try to draw what I'll be describing. Here we go. The chomage is a form of Japanese traditional haircut worn by men. It's most commonly associated with Edo period and samurai. A traditional Edo era chomage featured a shaped pate. The remaining hair, which is long, was oiled and tied into a small queue, which was folded onto the top of the head in the characteristic top knot. The chomage is created by shaving the middle of the head halfway back on the crown, then oiling and tying the remainder of the hair back into a ponytail. The end of the ponytail is then laid on the back of the head, facing forward. How'd you do? Was it easy to visualize it? How certain are you that you are visualizing correct pictures? Now listen to it again. This time with a visual aid. The chomage is a form of Japanese traditional haircut worn by men. It's most commonly associated with Edo period and samurai. A traditional Edo era chomage featured a shaved pate. The remaining hair, which was long, was oiled and tied into a small queue which was folded onto the top of the head in the characteristic top knot. The chomage is created by shaving the middle of the head halfway back on the crown, then oiling and tying the remainder of the hair back into a ponytail. The end of the ponytail is then laid on the back of the head facing forward. How is it this time? Was it much easier to follow? Now let's talk about the second major reason why people fail to visualize things. That's when what you're teaching is too complicated or it has high element interactivity. 
In the lamest term, that's when there are too many things going on at the same time. Like this picture here. Okay, for example, executing this judo throw involves so many tiny moves that have to be executed simultaneously and coordinated successively within a second or so. And in this case, it really does help to break it down to individual moves and illustrate them visually by using pictures, video, and arrows and shapes. Now, let's talk about yet another reason why people fail to visualize things. That's when there's just too much information for our brains to process. Central to learning is what is now called working memory. So what is working memory? It's a cognitive function or the function of the brain to temporarily hold, process, and manipulate information in your brain. For example, try calculating this in your head. When you try calculating this in your head, not on a piece of paper, you're using your working memory you're mentally holding and manipulating these numbers. Okay, the answer is 196. Okay, now, how about doing this? In your head. It's harder, isn't it? According to the most currently supported theory about working memory, we can hold up to four or five elements of new information at one time. Think of it as you only have four or five slots in your brain where you can hold chunks of information. Because of this limited capacity, you can only hold four or five chunks of information simultaneously. There are some tricks you can play to increase the capacity, but generally speaking, to process more chunks of information, you would have to move it out and put a new chunk in move the old chunk out and put the new chunk in move the old chunk out put a new chunk in move the old chunk out and put the new one in and this is what you have to do with your brain and there are more occasions where people may have a hard time visualizing conceptualizing or mentally representing things and you definitely want to use visual aids or some other forms of multimedia. And it is also generally a good idea to use visual aid or multimedia in order to reduce unnecessary extraneous load on your students' mental processing as well as in order to ensure that your students are getting a clear idea about what you're teaching, what you're talking about. The question still remains how exactly should we use multimedia to help our students visualize and better understand what we're teaching? What are some of the do's and don'ts? We'll be getting into more detail about those later.